What's up guys, welcome back to Living by the F Word. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to prepare for a camping music festival. Now, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jess. I've been attending festivals nonstop for, as long as I can remember actually, like from the early 2000s, I've been attending festivals, but I've been attending camping music festivals and large scale events globally and domestically for the last 10 years. And I've really learned a lot and I just wanna share with you everything I've learned. When I first started, I was in my younger 20s. I'm now about to be in my mid 30s. So my setup has evolved immensely. I started on budget bare minimum. Now I kind of have a lot more professional looking setup. I've learned so much. And so I really hope to cover everything I've learned in this video. So whether you are going to your first camping music festival and you're a little intimidated because you've never camped before, or maybe you're a veteran and you've never camped before, or maybe you're just new to festivals in general, I'm really hoping to help you out here in today's video. So first things first, you need to know before you go. What do I mean by that? Well, step one, you need to know if you're going to a camping music festival that is car camping or that is walk-in camping. So this does vary depending on the country you're in, the state you're in, the venue you're at, the festival you're at, they're all different. So it's really important that you know what style ticket you have or what type of camping festival you are going to first because that's really gonna determine how much gear you could bring or how you're gonna pack your gear. Step two of that process is gonna be your transportation. Transportation is super important. Are you gonna be taking a shuttle provided by the festival? Are you taking a carpool ride share? Are you sharing cars with your friends? Are you renting a car? Are you driving your own car? These are all really important things to know before you go. Now, you can figure all this out on their frequently asked questions page. It's something I mention in almost all of my videos. You have to, have to, have to check the frequently asked questions page. This is gonna give you all the information you need to know before you go. Also, you need a checklist. Obviously, you need a checklist so you don't forget anything. And luckily, I have constructed a checklist for you that you can download for free. And I have it in the link in the description box below. So now that we have all that figured out, let's dive into the items that we need in order to camp properly and have an amazing time at this camping music festival. Ooh, I'm so happy they're back. So number one, you obviously need a tent. I know this seems a little basic, but yes, you need a tent. So this could be a major investment for you depending on how many festivals you plan on going to, or maybe you're flying into the event and you are already gonna have one set up. So a lot of people do that if they're flying to an event, but if you wanna bring your own gear, you're more than welcome to do that too. I actually do have a video out on my channel about how to fly all your camping gear out to a festival. I've done that, I've also driven out, so it really kind of depends on your transportation, which is why it's important to know before you go. You see what I said there? <laughs> um, but yeah, basically you need a tent. So I have two different tents. I started really small, so depending on your budget or if you don't think you're gonna be going to that many festivals, you might wanna start out small. I then upgraded to a larger tent, which is actually a six person tent that I just used for myself and I could fit a queen size mattress in there. I could stand up and get dressed. I have a lot of space to have all of my things that I need and it's really comfortable living space. But if you can't really afford that, just a regular two person tent is fine. It really depends on your personal preference, how many people you're going with. Do you plan on going to festivals solo in the future? Do you want your own tent? You know, if you plan on going to a lot of camping festivals, Tools, definitely make sure you do the research and invest in something that is going to last for a long time that you could bring to all these festivals. Now, you definitely want something with a rain fly. Almost all of them come with rain flies, but that basically keeps the rain out. You also might want to look into some that have the built-in tarp. Both of my tents have built-in tarp so that you don't have to lay a tarp underneath it. Lots of people will lay tarp underneath their tent so that if it rains at a festival, the water doesn't pool underneath their tent and cause havoc and flooding in their tent. But both of mine have built-in tarps, so that's something you might want to consider as well when you're looking for a tent. And also, before you go to the festival, make sure you set up your tent. This is really important, and a lot of festival pros will say this, because you need to make sure you know how to set it up, especially if it's a new tent, you wanna know how it works. If you're borrowing a tent from someone, you wanna make sure that there's no parts missing. I have seen friends that have borrowed tents and they come to the festival with no poles. You have to make sure that you know what you're doing because after 
a 12 hour drive, 16 hour drive, 20 hour drive, you are exhausted. And the first thing you need to do is set up your tent and your campground. So it just makes it seamless if you know how to work it and how to set it up. Also, if you're a festival vet and you have your own tent, you should be doing this on the reg anyway, just to make sure that it airs out, that it's clean. I always like to set it up in my yard, make sure that I remember how to do it, especially if it's been a while. And it just makes life so much easier when you get to the festival. All right, the second item is a easy up canopy or a pop-up canopy tent. These are really crucial at camping music festivals because they provide you shade and kind of an intimate area for you and your friends to hang out around your campsite. Um, some people do put their easy ups over their tent to provide even more shade. And that is something I've seen people do so that they could sleep during the day. I personally don't do that, but I have built like a monkey hunt over my tent at Burning Man. So I do understand the benefits of having like a pop-up canopy over your tent if you wanna do that. But mostly people use it as a common area. So it's super important to have this so that you can keep your cooler shaded, yourself shaded, especially during the day in the summertime, festival season is so hot. So your tent really gets hot and lots of times you like can't even sleep in it once the sun rises. So you want to have this shaded area for you and all your friends to be at make sure you get heavy duty stakes. So I have heavy duty stakes that glow in the dark. They're really crucial just because the little dinky ones that come with them lots of times will not hold them down. And if wind comes, you will see your easy up canopy in a graveyard. <laughs> a canopy graveyard is what I like to call them where you just see a pile of canopies all like mangled in the garbage. It's really not pleasant. So get heavy duty stakes, it really helps out. I use those on my tent as well. And it just really is keeping your, your campsite safe as well as people around you. If you do know that there's gonna be a storm, make sure you lower your tent down, your canopy. There's little settings that can lower it down. You wanna make sure that it's at the lowest setting possible if you're heading into the festival grounds and you know it's gonna be windy. You don't want that thing to be flying up in the air. It's just danger and can really hurt someone. So those are some tips for that item. Next, we have tapestries, clamps, bungee cords, zip ties, kind of all like bunched together just because that's what you use to kind of build your canopy uh, setup to make it extra shaded. So you definitely want tapestries to put along the side of your easy up canopy just because this is what really provides the shade. It also provides you intimacy so that like you guys can have your own little area and no one can really see like, you know, what you're doing, if you're sleeping, if you're partying or whatever, like you just have your own little space and it's really also beautiful to look at. Now I use clamps that I will show you that I got off of Amazon that are pretty heavy duty. They've worked at Burning Man. They work at Electric Forest, a lot of camping festivals that I've attended. These things came in clutch. So I really recommend those because they're heavy duty and clamp onto anything. I also love bungee cords. I just released a video about underrated items and bungee cords is one of them. I also hook up some of my tapestries to bungee cords because they really can help and, and also you could add like flags and certain things to your campsite. That way it's easier to find your campsite. Also, I just wanna mention that these three items that I just mentioned in the, in the first part of this video, you really should have these accessible in your trunk, meaning they should be the last things to go into your trunk when you're packing up for the festival. I'm gonna do a whole separate video about how to pack your car and your cooler, just because I don't want this video to be too long, but just an FYI, in case you don't see that video, definitely have your easy up canopy, your tent and your tapestries easily accessible for, as the first things that you pull out because that is how you kind of claim your ground when you're going to a camping music festival. And that's what everyone else is doing too. So you don't want them like buried in your trunk behind your suitcases, behind your cooler, behind everything and you can't get to them because then it becomes a total shit show. <laughs> All right, next item is sleeping gear. So whether that be an air mattress or just a sleeping pad or blankets, you know, it really depends on your budget. When I first started going to festivals, I slept on the ground. So if you're younger and your body can handle that and you really don't care and you just wanna be there and you just wanna have this experience, by all means, it is completely doable. I used to do that all the time. I've camped in Ibiza, I've camped at Tomorrowland, at Burning Man. 
on the ground when I was younger. Now, like I said, I've evolved to a more elaborate setup. I have a queen size mattress that is elevated off the ground and it is way more comfortable. So it just really depends. You can start to build your camping gear throughout the years. You don't need to start out huge. You just need to start going to the festivals and you will learn from your neighbors, from your friends, from the people that have been going for a long time and you will start to build your gear up and then eventually you will have a lot of stuff. So I don't want you to feel like that you need an air mattress, but I do highly recommend it. It really, really helps out, or at least to get a sleeping pad. So you could get a sleeping pad, of course, off of Amazon, but you guys can just go to hiking and camping stores like REI, things like that. They have all this amazing gear that people use to backpack and hike and stuff like that. So they really come in handy for camping music festivals. You definitely want to be comfortable. You've been walking all night, shuffling all night, partying all night. You go to the after hours, you go to the RV parties, you go wherever, and then you want to crash. So it is a little harder when you are sleeping on the actual ground, but I've done it. So you could do it too. The next item or items that you'll need are tables and chairs. So this can kind of be a group effort if you have a group that's going. There's two different types of tables I recommend having. One is kind of like a small little coffee table that you could have in the center of your campsite that you have your chairs around that you could keep like ashtrays on, you could keep your hookah on, you know, just, you know, lighters, whatever you need, like kind of like a living room space. So smaller table, and I will show you an example. I've had multiple in the past, but I do have one that's kind of compact that has cup holders, and then it has a little under area that is really cool. So you want some type of smaller table. Then if you can, if someone has the room in their car, depending on your group and you guys collab or wherever you're coming from, you definitely want kind of like larger folding tables, kind of like tables that you could play Pong on or have all your kitchen supplies on. Like if you're gonna be bringing a portable grill or you're going to have a whole kitchen set up and you want your food elevated so that bugs and stuff like that can't get to it, I really recommend a higher table like that for a kitchen setup. Now as far as chairs, a lot of people use just regular, you know, tailgating chairs that fold up. Those work fine. I've also seen people bring lounge chairs. I've seen people bring all different types of chairs. It depends on what your budget is and what you feel comfortable in. However, I recommend a blow up chair. I just mentioned that in a new video I put out about underrated items for camping music festivals and a blow up chair is life changing you guys. I will link that video in the description below. Up next, we have lighting. Lighting is so crucial because you need lighting to see at night and you need to see where your camp is and you need to see what you're doing. So basically I recommend solar lights. It's another item that I just mentioned in my recent video about underrated items. They charge up on their own because they use the sun during the day and then at night they automatically turn on so you really don't have to worry about it. They're already there. I also have a light that has a hook that I hang in my tent. You could use something like a tap light if you have a smaller tent you could use tap lights I've used those in the past and you just kind of slide them in your little mesh pocket inside and can tap them on tap them off headlamp that is one of my biggest festival essentials I cannot stress enough having a headlamp you guys I've talked about it in tons of my videos so I'm not going to talk about it again here but just know that headlamps are so clutch because they make you completely hands-free so if you show up at an event in the dark you can set up your camp if you don't have a light or can't afford or want to pay for an extra lighting in your tent, you have that, which is like 20 bucks, and that's your light for the whole entire festival. So lighting is important, but I think that solar lights work best for the camp setup for your Easy Up canopy, just because they're really beautiful. They come in all different shapes and colors, and they're super easy because you don't need to do anything. They just work on their own. You need some type of power source. Now, you don't need it. However, I do think that it's super useful to have some type of power source. So if you're at a camping music festival, that is like a luxury having your car nearby because you could charge your shit in your car. You can, you know, plug your phone in. You don't really need a power source. But if you start heading to festivals that are walk-in camping or that are really self-reliant type festivals, I think it's important to have a power source. So I have a really small generator that has a plug and four USBs. 
It is super useful. It has a car charger. So if I do go car camping at a car camping festival, I could charge it that way, but it usually lasts about eight hours. And it also comes with a panel that is a solar panel. So that's where it really comes in useful for events like Burning Man and Vision, other festivals that I've camped at that basically you don't have a power source hookup you know, in the middle of nowhere, right? So yeah, I really recommend getting some type of little mini generator. It does help out. I've seen people bring huge generators with speakers and stuff like that. Like I said, really depends on who you're going with, what they have, you can collab. You don't, not every single person needs to bring these. It's like really useful to plan ahead and see what everyone has so that you could all come together as a team and just have like the dopest setup ever if everyone is contributing in different ways. It's a communal effort, you know what I mean? But yeah, I find my generator extremely useful because my particular mattress I need to plug in to blow up, so I use it for that. I also have like a hot logic if I want to bring that and heat food up. There's different things that I use my generator for and it just comes in useful for charging my camera batteries and stuff if I need to vlog. So I do recommend it, although I did just get this item a couple years ago and I've been festivaling for so long. So it is not a necessity. I don't want you to think it is, especially if you're just starting out. It's just something that I recommend. Next up we have coolers drinks, food. Now I'm going to do a whole separate video on how to pack your cooler, give you food and snack and beverage suggestions for festivals. So I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but just know that you should bring these types of things with you, especially snacks. There are amazing food vendors at festivals, but sometimes on the campgrounds, depending on how big they are, you may be really far from that food. And so it's so important to have at least some snacks on you, especially when you're partying. Food is fuel. You just got to take care of yourself. You know what I mean? So definitely have food, drinks and snacks and a cooler. The cooler really helps to keep items cold. Of course, campgrounds do sell ice. They usually come around if you can't find one nearby to walk to, they will come around on a golf cart or something and they'll be saying that they're selling ice. So just important to have this in case you're new to festivals, like it's really important to have and make sure you subscribe so that you could see the video I'm putting out about what to bring and how to pack your cooler. So up next we have kind of like the kitchen setup. Now, this of course is another kind of like add on. It's not necessary in order to prepare, but there are people that bring grills. There are people that bring like a full blown kitchen setup. So depending on your crew and how much you want to eat, how much you want to cook, uh, it really just kind of depends, but reusable cutlery and reusable plates, reusable cups. I'm huge on that. That's another item that I just mentioned in underrated items for camping music festivals. Definitely just try to limit your waste. You know what I mean? Like festivals bring a lot of waste. They bring a lot of glitter and garbage. And so if we can all help out by bringing reusable things, that would help a lot. You could just wash your dishes and stuff at the water refill station. You can really help the cleanup crew and really help the community that you are going to by keeping your campsite cleaner. So th those type of items help. Now, yeah, I mentioned grill. I personally don't have a grill, but I have camped with people that have full blown fat, uh, flat, <laughs> fat, ah! <laughs> full blown flat grills. But um, there's also like little propane grills you can get that have like the little uh, 16 ounce bottles. So you could get something like that and have really awesome food, but I'm gonna touch upon that, like I said, in the next video. All right, so now you pretty much know the basics as far as what you need for camping music festivals. I hope this was helpful. I do wanna mention that it's super crucial to know before you go, like I said in the beginning of the video, if it's a walk-in camping festival, it's really gonna limit what you could bring. Like for instance, you probably will not bring an easy up canopy tent. You probably will not bring be bringing as much gear. In fact, most people that are flying to events will have an easy up uh, set up tent already but what you might want to consider is like a pull wagon or bungee cords to strap things onto your backpack or things like that you really kind of need to get creative and really kind of be more resourceful if you're going to a walk-in camping festival 
Car camping festivals are easy peasy. If you are going to a car camping festival and you are driving, it is like a dream. You could like bring a whole little city with you. It is like so much fun. You could bring a lot of stuff and really make it like a luxury setup if you want it to be. So really just depends on what you're going for, who you're going with. And yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. I have camped from Tomorrowland to Envision to Burning Man. I have camped a lot of places around the world and I really have a lot of information and knowledge about this. So if there's anything I missed, please feel free to ask me in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I would love to help you out. That is what I'm here for. Don't forget to download the free checklist in the description below. That checklist has all these items plus way more, including clothing, accessories, food and drink. It has it all. It's the checklist that I use when I go to camping music festivals. So definitely don't forget to do that. I forgot to mention that, but yeah, I will see you in the next one guys. Peace.